Good morning, folks. Largest quake since yesterday was moments ago in Tonga. Meter data still coming in, but we already got two readings of 6 magnitude and a 6.7. That's probably not correct. Oswald, apparently still a major factor, not just lingering rain, but tornadoes as well. Extreme weather in Queensland. Cyclone Gary, still ruining Perfect Island summer days in the South Pacific, but weakening fast. My eyes are firmly set on the West Indian Ocean, where Madagascar has another system heading in. Luckily, Reunion and Meridius will be missed this time. Quickly approaching the time when I won't show this type of weather anymore, so you need to know what you're doing. The big blue low-pressure systems spin counterclockwise looking from above in the northern hemisphere. Red high pressure pushes out in a clockwise motion. And with the two sides spinning oppositely, their convergent force will be amplified. That's what you see on the wind map. When this warm air coming up hits the cold over the Midwest today, we will have some winter storms pop up. When it shifts east next week and the colder air dips a little lower to meet the convergence near the Gulf states, we could see tornadoes. This is all about the pressure convergence. And by the way, this isn't exactly normal development up here in the northern Atlantic, so UK, take heat. Spot of good news on the Bartol. Cosmic ray density stopped short of the observed max and is headed lower. Still in the coronal hole stream according to the solar wind data, but if anything you see the density and temperature in orange and green tapering off this morning. You see the moderate flux gate disturbance here. Goes magnetometer shows the same and the Canadian. Major inductions from the baseline through multiline resonance above 2 Hz again, waning this morning. The bad news is the plasma penetration at the red spikes indicating ionospheric absorption. Both electrons and low energy protons were in flux at planet Earth. Luckily, the high-energy proton stayed steady. Auroral Electrojet shows the energy flux from this space weather impact. As we move to this morning, it does die down. All from a stream emanating from that dark coronal hole turning away. And as it turns away, a new active region develops as it turns in. Let's also watch this on the magnetogram. Black is negative polarity on this chart, and white is positive. We actually had a true jack-in-the-box active region come out of nowhere yesterday as well, but this little guy was way north and on the western limb, headed for the back side. Back to relevance, the magnetogram gave away that this is a bipolar spreading group with most development occurring in the middle. Currently the charges are split, we've just got a beta class now, certainly going to be watching a few areas on the northeast as well. Speedy little Mercury, set to heliocentrically conjoin Mars soon, but not before conjoining Neptune. Again, heliocentrically, Venus is set to oppose the dwarf planet Ceres. Here are the geocentric and heliocentric positions for the next month. A quick look at what's coming on the Sun shows two large dark coronal holes on Stereo B. We'll be seeing them in a week to 10 days. Still expecting impact from this filament eruption, should be today. Tough to tell how it will compare with the coronal hole stream in timing or severity. Eyes open. No fear. It's 6.15 a.m. Eastern Time and that's the news. Be safe everyone.